Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got another fat bike. This one is called the T1 Thunder from Turbo Ant. I'm always excited to test these newer brands out because they're trying to push the envelope as far as like what a bike can do. In fact, the best performing bike in this price range is a company that I had never heard of and it was their first bike that they produced. So in case you're wondering why I review all these random companies, that's why. You never know what you're gonna get. Anyway, the T1 is in a very competitive price range for fat bikes in the $1,000 to $2,000 range. I've reviewed eight other brands in this price range, so it's got some good competition. Now, as far as all the ratings for this bike, it's very comparable to the other brands, so I'm out here to test to see how well it can do. Now, the biggest difference with this brand is the discount. They're offering a $700 discount. The bike is selling for $1,700, so after the discount, it drops that price down to $999. I'm a little bit worried why they have such a huge discount. It's just, it seems like a marketing ploy to me. So really, this is gonna perform more like a $1,000 bike. That's kind of just my guess anyways. I came out to the desert to see what the T1 can do, so let's kick the review off with a speed test. The T1 comes with a 750 watt brushless motor, which is the same size as most brands in this category. And that's powered with a 48 volt, 14 amp hour Samsung battery. And that's the same size as 90% of the brands. This is actually my favorite type of battery to remove. It has that, you know, kind of latch handle on the side, which helps you to just easily take it out and put it back in. And then once out, you can charge it on the go. There is a charge port there, and that does take seven hours. It's time to see how that power transfers into speed. This does have a speed rating of up to 28 miles per hour, so pretty high speed. And there are five pedal assist levels. Well, that's what I have the bike set to here. Uh, like other bikes in this price range, you can set that to be anywhere from zero to three, one to three, up to zero to nine or one to nine. And then in the settings, you can also change the power for each one of those pedal assist levels. You can also change the top speed. I do have a set for the highest speed for this test. So I'm gonna start off with Pedal Assist 1 and show you how fast each of the five levels can go. For Pedal Assist 1, I got 10 miles per hour. Pedal Assist 2, 12. Pedal Assist 3, 14. Pedal Assist 4, 15. And Pedal Assist 5, 25 miles per hour, which is three short of the rating and ties with a couple other brands for the slowest bike in this category. Now, if I place this in the $1,000 category, it would have beaten all the brands by at least four miles per hour. The T1 weighs 73 pounds, and that is average for a bike in this class, and it can hold up to 330 pounds. As most of you guys know, I'm 185 and want to see how fast or how long it takes to top the bike out, so this is the acceleration test. Now, most bikes in this class take around 19 seconds to hit 26 miles per hour, so that's the mark that I'm looking for. In the settings, you can change how fast the bike picks up, levels one through four, with four being the slowest. Uh, the default is one, uh, so the bike is set to the fastest starts right out of the box. There's a half twist throttle on the right side of the handlebars, so I'm gonna compare that to the highest pedal assist level and see which can top out the bike the fastest. On pedal assist, the power takes just over a revolution on the easiest gear before it kicks on. With the throttle, it's almost instant, but not that strong. The T1 is a pretty gentle and slow acceleration, and it's hard to compare with the other brands since it doesn't go that fast. Now most brands in this category do reach 25 miles per hour in about 10 to 12 seconds, where it took 15.44 seconds with the T1. <laughs> the T1 has a range rating of 35 up to 60 miles, depending on the pedal assist level. Now for this test, I did start the app at my house and traveled about a half a mile on the road till I hit the country. And that's where I spent most of the time. I wanted to show you guys what type of range you could expect with off-road riding, bouncing back and forth between pedal assist two, three, and straight throttle. You know, guys, it's kind of hard to think of different things to say for these fat tire bikes. The design of these are just so similar to one another. It's rare when you get a bike that does something different. This one is just your standard, typical, <laughs> you know, mid-step design. And they have built the battery into the frame a little bit, so it's not as bulky as other brands I've seen. Well, as far as geometry, it actually fits my frame pretty good. I'm 5'11". The bike size rating is from 5'3 to 6'4". And I do feel like I'm a little bit higher, you know, higher off the ground on this than other models. It's more of a short and stumpy fat bike than a long and low. And that is kind of nice if you want to take this off road, you know, off trail, you're off the ground a little bit higher, so you're not going to get whacked by, you know, the lower weeds and bushes. And one thing I noticed about this bike is how high you can adjust the handlebars to. And most bikes have that. This one just has a wider range than I've seen. 
I do like having handlebars higher up, just saves my lower back. The spacing between the seat and the handlebars is also a good distance for my frame. I don't feel like I'm reaching out of my comfort level to grab onto the handlebars. It's actually a very comfortable bike to ride. They've done a nice job of dampening the motor. It's very quiet, even when climbing. The only thing that drives me crazy as far as sounds is the kickstand just vibrating and bouncing when I'm hitting some rubber parts of the trail. And that's an easy fix, just a couple screws to take that off. The handlebars are a good length for the size of the bike. I'm not sure what the length is, didn't specify in the instructions, but just riding on a bunch of different brands, I can just get a feel for the size of handlebars that I like, and these fit the frame very well. You do have these bulkier wingtip grips, and they are pretty hard. They're not the best grips I've ever felt. There's Tektro aluminum alloy levers, and there is a rubber pad on the outside of each lever, and the area is big enough to hold three of my fingers. You got a bell on the left side, and on the right, you have a Shimano 7-speed SIS shifter, and that is one of the cheaper and more basic shifters they offer. I do like the saddle. It's got a nice grip texture to it, so it holds you in place along with how it's designed. And there is a handle on the back side. Makes it easy to haul and lift the bike. The pedal assist sensitivity is a little bit slower than what I'm used to. It takes about one and a half to two revolutions for the bike to get going once you know I am going and I stop and then start to pedal again. And then from a standstill, it's about a full revolution before it kicks in. Now in the settings, you can change the sensitivity of the assist. There's levels two through nine. Nine is the most gradual and slowest. Two is the fastest and most prompt. The bike is set to level two as default, so it is set to the most sensitive settings. And on a flat stretch of road on the highest gear, once I hit about 17 miles an hour, really can't pedal fast enough to make any difference. Uh, the throttle sensitivity is actually pretty good. It doesn't deliver like a, a large amount of power when you first turn it on, but it does engage as soon as I twist it. There's RST front fork suspension, and you can adjust and lock that out. And you can kind of see through the B-roll as my drone's following me that I am standing up quite a bit and just using the throttle. And that is because, you know, there's a hard tail, so it is quite bumpy on the back end, but man, that front fork, it is, it does a phenomenal job of tackling this terrain. I am more than happy with it. For a thousand dollar bike, that is terrific suspension. And then last but not least, you have 26 by four inch Kenda Fat tires. They're not the knobbiest or beefiest tires. I have noticed I've slipped a little bit more out here than I usually do. It's not to the point where I wouldn't recommend taking this off-road. You can definitely, you know, use this to explore the country. When I got back home, my tracking app recorded 13.73 miles with 1,042 feet of elevation gain. I was hoping to get a few more miles than that, especially to compete in this price range. This is the no power test. Pedal assist is on zero. There's no power in the pedals, but you still have power with the throttle, which that's the first I've ever seen. Usually when the pedal assist is set to zero, this thing cuts off too. And that is why they have this, you know, switch here to shut the throttle off. I'm on the easiest gear, hitting some sections of sand, like right now. <laughs> that does get a little tiring. It's just a couple inches on top of hard pack, so it's not terribly bad. Even on this flat part, I'm getting a pretty good burn. Here's a small hill, and it is very difficult to get up that. Uh, I would not recommend riding this without power. <laughs> The T1 has a torque rating of 80 newton meters, which is about average for a bike in this price range. And they say it can climb up to a 30% grade hill. I've been out in this area quite a bit over the last couple months. I measured a bunch of hills too, and they're about 30 to 40%. So I'm gonna go out and tackle a few of those and see how well it does. I'm gonna start climbing with some speed. I've got on the highest pedal assist level. Let's see what it can do. And this is a short but steep hill. 30% gray, just over 30 at its steepest, right here. Oh yeah, I'm working. Oh, I gotta stand up. <laughs> okay, no, that's pretty good. I don't know if I could uh, make it up anything longer than that. On the easiest gear, and it's, I'm almost at that point where I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't pedal. I'm getting a workout at the same time, but it got me to the top. The Thunder has Tektro Aries 180 millimeter disc brakes. Gonna head down some of these hills. I just went up for the hill test and see how well they do. 
Okay, gonna do a little brake check here. This is the same hill I just went up for the hill test. This is not the steepest section here, but no squeaking, nice and smooth. And those big old tires are really helping to slow this bike down. Yeah, stopping the hardest part here. Yeah. The levers do take quite a bit of pressure to engage the brakes. Here's an overview of the backlit LCD screen. The LCD screen is on the left side, power button's in the middle. Hold that down for a couple of seconds. It's not the brightest screen I've ever seen, but uh, I can definitely see it as I'm riding. You have a plus and a minus to change the pedal assist levels, zero to five. And again, that will go up to nine if you like. Hit the power button to switch through different readouts. So trip time, odometer max, odometer average. Hold down the plus button to turn on the lights. And there is a 48 volt headlight. So you got a very bright light in the front. And then there's also a rear tail light. And then when you hit the brake levers, it does light up. Hold down the minus button for the walk assist mode. And that tops out at three miles per hour and will stop as soon as you take your hand off the button. And then to access the settings, just hold down the plus and minus button. And that is the same for, you know, most of these bikes. You just scroll through by hitting the power button. I'll have a link in the description on what you can change and how to change it. Now this is kind of a cool feature. I've seen it on a couple bikes. Uh, there is a red button here and that disengages the throttle. And that's pretty much it. The T1 comes with an IP65 waterproof rating, free shipping in the lower 48, and a two year warranty. Overall, if you're around my weight of 185 pounds and ride this off-road, here's what you can expect. A top speed of 25 miles per hour for pedal assist five and 24 for throttle. A slow and gradual acceleration taking just under 16 seconds to top the bike out. A range of almost 14 miles on pedal assist two and three with throttle about half the time for off-road riding. It's got decent hill climbing ability, powering up a couple 30 to 40% grade hills with some assistance. And the dual dish brakes are smooth, don't squeak, and have some good stopping power. If you want to pick this up, I've got the link and the $700 off code in the description. Also check out my website for all my reviews, I've got that there too. Before you go, hit that like button, and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and take care.